Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to another episode of The Trans Atheist with your host, Ariane. And today we're going to talk about transphobia in America, specifically being introduced into our laws. So on Saturday, July 16th, my husband and I traveled to the state capitol to take part in the March for Trans Justice. This was a national march taking place in cities across the United States. Much of this march was motivated by the surge in transphobic bills being proposed on the federal level and also in state legislatures across the country. So before I move on to the remainder of what we're going to talk about, I'd like to share just a bit of some of the speeches at the march in Columbus, Ohio, where my husband and I attended. By one, gatekeeping healthcare and preventing people who can really benefit from it from having it. Because there is this implied over ownership over our lives and our bodies. We've got some signs up here that if you want to carry them, they kind of blur that line between, you know, stay out of my uterus and also trans person who wants to just express themselves. Feel free to congrats. Thank you. So we're also talking about 454, which takes away gender affirming care for people under the age of 19. I, as I mentioned, I am an instructor, I'm a teacher, I work with people in that age bracket, K through uh, college. And these students, time and time again, have come to me and they've said, you know, being able to go and get my tea or get my estrogen, you know, is something that has saved my life. And I know for myself as a trans person, if I had access to affirming care as a young person, I would not have had some of the unfortunate incidents that I did have in my life, mostly involving self-harm and suicide, but also othering and ostracization from my community and my friend group because I simply did not fit in. So I'm speaking as someone that, you know, a voice from the past, but also as an instructor today, that we have to march to raise awareness. What is happening on the federal level, you might ask? Okay. So on the state level, we are battle. We are basically fighting a forest fire with water guns, and it's an ongoing fight, state by state by state. What we did, um, myself and a number of other people, went to Washington D.C. and we spoke before a congressional hearing in front of the senators. This was representatives of all 50 states, and we basically challenged them with, "Hey, you know, this has to stop." This is the same kind of tactic the states are using as they did during the civil rights movement after the, after the lifting of the Jim Crow law for segregation. So on the state level, they were continuing to get that to push through. A federal protection came in to prevent states from doing that because it's unconstitutional. And while things did not get, let's say, perfect and repaired, and there's still a long battle with that, it definitely took away segregation on the state level. We are trying a similar tactic from a federal standpoint to protect us in the states now. After we had done this, there was that presidential uh, presidential executive order that will not stop these state bills, but will hobble them because the people that are pushing the state bills are still trying to push them by sneaking them in to different bills and adjusting the language. Case in point was uh, HB 61 which actually is now something that people will be able to vote on in this voting season. And if it passes, it gives any adult person the right to examine a student's genitals if they do not believe that they are the gender they claim to be. That is state-sanctioned pedophilia and state-sanctioned sexual assault. We are here today because of this kind of bullshit. It has to stop. Yes, it does. Disgusting. Right? So, as we wait for more of our speakers to come up here, um, I'm going to have Co come on up and talk a little bit about our route. We're going to do our rally and we're going to speak to him. And then after we do that, we're going to take to the streets and we're going to do a march route, which will end with us circling around here. But he's going to get specific, they're going to get specific about that. The web page from our local children's hospital. Jesus. That it incidentally has my daughter's face on it on the landing page. <laughs> um, it is three to five clicks away from hardcore pornography. 
In oh fact, the God. sponsor of that bill had never spoken to a transgender or non-binary person before he decided that he knew better than the American Medical Association, the Endocrine Society, and the American Academy of Adolescent and Child Psychiatrists. Very clear. And also the lived experiences of so many of you here. So who am I? I'm a really pissed off mom. I am furious the politicians want to convince everyone that the most important thing about you, and really the most important thing about all of us that aren't cisgender, heterosexual, white males, are our body parts. That they want to erase all of the other aspects of you that make you wonderful and beautiful and special. These politicians don't see that you are athletes, that you are artists, that you are lawyers and nurses and teachers and musicians, that you are dreamers and that you are fighters, and that each of us has value to our community for exactly who we are. I'm tired, thank you. I am tired of lawmakers ignoring our youth. They see you in the checkout aisle at the grocery store with your purple hair and your they, them pronoun on your name tag and they make it clear that your voice isn't important. That if you dare to raise your voice and shake the status quo, they tell you to listen to the older adults in the room. They tell you that what you are suggesting is not how we do things in politics. Young people, it is time to get really loud. the boat. You've been shushed, ignored, and patted on the head and told that you don't really understand how it works. Well, I'm a person capable of pregnancy and I can tell you that how it's been working is bullshit. I've sat in that building and watched the theatrics. I've watched as people who have been in office as long as I've been alive, and I'm looking at you, Mike DeWine, have ignored the actual wishes of the people. It is time to call your lawmakers and demand that they actually listen. It is time to vote in the primaries for candidates that don't look or act like all the other people in office. You know who I want to represent me in office and my daughter in office? I want black people. I want yeah. queer people. Yeah. I yes. want people who refuse to shut up and who refuse to vote based on the special interest groups that fund their campaigns. Yes. Call your legislators, vote in every election, run for office. White women, we are really pissed off that Roe was overturned, as we should be. But it is time to understand that so many more bills affect bodily autonomy and access to health care than abortion rights. We cannot be single issue voters because we do not live in a single issue world. Yeah. Yeah. Silencing the LGBTQ community affects bodily autonomy. Banning trans health care impacts bodily autonomy for all of us. Gerrymandering affects bodily autonomy because it puts people in office that don't actually represent the people. Police brutality affects bodily autonomy because it cuts lives short of the children we chose to have, disproportionately black and brown ones. Gun reform bills affect bodily autonomy because it kills the babies we chose to have who are in the classroom right now. White women, we have got to start using our privilege to vote for the candidates and the bills that support all of us, not just some of us. We must broaden our understanding that when we vote for the issues that support some of us, we vote for the issues that protect all of us. We need to make it clear that we are sick and tired of the legislative bodies legislating our fucking bodies. I need everyone to call your legislators often, not just once or twice. Vote every chance you get. Tell your friends to vote every chance they get. Show up at the rallies. Send the emails. And if you can, send money to the organizations who fight these bills and who amplify your voice because it is time that your voice is heard. Thank you. That first video was one of the organizers of the march. The second is the parent of a trans child. Now, I've blurred the video because her child was with her when she spoke, and we aren't going to put that face, put her child's face out there uh, to be targeted by transphobes on the internet. Um, so let's talk about the proposed bills that are impacting the state of Ohio. The first bill is House Bill 616. 
The primary sponsors of this bill are District 63 Representative Mike Loychik and District 65 Representative Gene Schmidt. Now this bill is basically just a copy and paste of Florida's Don't Say Gay bill. It bans the teaching of what it calls divisive and inherently racist concepts, including any teaching of sexual orientation or gender identity, CRT, which, you know, critical race theory, intersectionality, or any concept the State Board of Education may decide is inherently racist or divisive. This outright ban covers students from kindergarten through third grade. Now, for those in fourth grade and beyond, it states that sexual orientation and gender identity may only be taught in an age and developmentally appropriate manner, which the bill fails to even define. Obviously, that lays it wide open for interpretation, and you can pretty safely bet that these legislatures and these right-wingers are going to interpret it in the most restrictive way possible. Then we move on to House Bill 327, which is nearly identical to 616. The primary sponsors of this bill are District 76 Representative Diane Grendel and District 99 Representative Sarah Fowler Arthur. Next on the list is House Bill 151. Now, this bill is actually about the Ohio Teacher Residency Program. Nothing at all to do with anything about gender identity or sexual orientation. But, at the very last minute, the Republicans added in the language from House Bill 61, which was titled, Save Women's Sports Act to make this bill more about attacking trans girls than about anything to do with the residency or mentorship program. Now, the primary sponsors of House Bill 61 were District 80 Representative Jenna Powell and District 50 Representative Reggie Stoltzfus. House Bill 151 with the HB 61 language was passed at 11.15 at night on June 1st, the very first day of Pride Month. The bill bans transgender girls from, uh, from school sports and college sports. It also sets up a verification process where one can be accused of being trans and would actually have to prove themselves to be cisgender through, among other things, a genital examination. So, this bill doesn't just victimize trans girls, but it also puts any girl who may not meet some random parent or some school official's definition of femininity through an invasive examination just to curb their curiosity. Then we come to what I believe may be one of the most dangerous bills currently being proposed in Ohio, and one with a lot of backstory to go along with it. It's HB 454. This bill is titled the SAFE Act, or the Save Adolescents from Experimentation Act. And the primary sponsors of this bill are District 88 Representative Gary Click, and District 76 Representative Diane Grindel. Now, Mr. Click isn't simply the representative for the 88th Ohio Congressional District, but also the pastor of Fremont Baptist Temple. This bill would ban nearly all transition-related health care from any minor under the age of 18. In essence, it would force the medical detransition of trans kids in the state of Ohio. Puberty blockers, hormones, surgery, which isn't even a thing for trans kids, but the right-wingers still love to use it as a scare tactic, and even some gender-affirming therapy. This bill 
is filled with outdated and misrepresented studies, most of them from the 1980s, and more than its fair share of outright lies. So the bill claims that most trans kids just grow out of being transgender. That suicide rates actually increase for people once they have gender-affirming care. That being transgender is caused by other underlying mental health conditions and disorders. That there exists no studies on the impact of puberty blockers or hormones for youth or adults and that referrals to gender clinics have become common as if we're having some sudden pandemic of transness. Now not one of those things is actually true or has any basis in the reality of the study of transgender identity and transgender people's lives. The bill also requires school staff to out trans students to their parents and makes it illegal for health care plans in the state of Ohio to cover transition related health care for minors. So Mr. Click has openly admitted that he never spoke to a trans person about this bill before he introduced it and that he did much of this research on the internet watching videos of those who oppose transgender care, of detransitioners that have been, you know, utilized by the right wing. Now, an article with ABC News 5 Cleveland quotes Click as saying, and this is directly from the article, Click, however, believes being transgender is a mental illness caused by a traumatic event. Young people have been, in essence, groomed in school and other places, he said. Then they've gone off into some of this transgender type stuff. When asked if he believed grooming leads to someone being transgender, he said, absolutely, adding that molestation and abuse can also lead to being trans. The Cleveland Clinic and the American Psychiatric Association both say that isn't true. So perhaps I'm being just a little too hard on Mr. Click. I mean, after all, it's not like he actually came up with the idea or likely even wrote much of the bill. In the ABC interview, he admitted that he was approached by the Center for Christian Virtue and asked to put forward the bill. Now, who is the Center for Christian Virtue? Well, I'm so glad you asked. CCV is a right-wing Christian theocratic organization that basically lobbies politicians and churches to push to add their doctrine and dogma into our state law. According to CCV, uh, or, pardon me, according to CLIC, CCV reached out to him last spring. In the summer of 2021, CCV was already going around to churches, setting the groundwork to garner fundamentalist support and needed outrage to fuel this bill into becoming law. <coughs> So specifically, in July of 2021, David Mahan, who is one of the directors at the Center for Christian Values, was at the Crossroads Church in Cleve or pardon me, in Cincinnati. Now I'm just scrolling through because I had done some notes. I watched the full version of his speech sermon, whatever the hell you want to call this. So, some of the points that he brought up throughout the speech, I just wanted to touch on. This is how he was prepping the churches for this type of bigoted uh, legislation. So, one of the things he talked about working in the past 
with HIV prevention in public schools, which seems like a pretty decent cause. I mean, we want to make sure that we're educating our youth. But he says that he became upset when those events brought in people that he claimed were encouraging a lifestyle that led to the disease in the first place. In other words, he was irritated that gay people were being involved in HIV education because to him, HIV and AIDS are a gay disease. He says that he started seeing porn and bondage sexual content in school sex ed curriculum about eight years ago. Now, I looked this up and tried to research and see if I could find any example of what he's talking about uh, because it sounded pretty far-fetched. Now, as it turns out, there was a curriculum that was talking about, now this was a high school curriculum, that had illustrations, not photos, wasn't porn, of reproductive organs. It talked about things like erotic touch and all of that in the context of consent. It was, um, it was only proposed at six California schools. It was never ever taught in any of those schools. It was pulled before it ever even made it to the school. So again, it's a complete and total fabrication of what actually happened to try to create outrage. He said he heard from some in the education system that parents are barriers to service for children and that we have to find ways to get around that. Well, you know, I'm going to be very honest. In a lot of cases, that's a fact. When you have parents going to school board meetings screaming about critical race theory that's not even part of the school curriculum, when you have parents that are pushing for bills to where if anyone even mentions that gay people or trans people exist, they throw a fit at a school board meeting, you have them outraged that someone's pronouns or gender identity is going to be respected, that they'll be able to use the correct bathroom. You have them um, going on and on about mask mandates because they want their children to be able to spread a potentially deadly disease throughout the school. I think it's pretty fair to say that yes, there are a number of occasions where these right-wing theocratic parents are in fact a barrier to education for their children. But that's not even the biggest problem. Yes, they want to block their kids, but they're not talking just about, I don't want my child to see this. They want these things removed from school. Their child, taking the trans issue for example, their child is not trans. Their child may not be, you know, having a different pronoun or a different, uh, you know, name used or anything like that. That doesn't matter to them. It's not what's happening to their child. They don't want someone else's child to be allowed to be respected while in school. Now, David in this sermon also said that radical activists are using children with gender dysphoria as human shields to push an agenda most people in this room would disagree with. He also says people are getting canceled for talking about this right now. Now, I guess by David's standards, I would qualify as a radical activist. And you know what? I will happily take that title because if rallying behind our youth, our trans youth, standing up for LGBT kids, if that makes me a radical activist, damn proud to be one. He talked about, this was a funny one I thought, he talked about an interaction with a group of male cheerleaders. He immediately goes into the story of revealing some of them to be gay, even though he says the subject never came up. He says they were all emotionally or physically abused, 
And that is the story everywhere he goes. He says the label, aka being gay, becomes their identity because we have millions of dollars in media behind it. So, the fact of the matter is, we have already looked at this issue over and over. And by we, I'm talking about, like, society through science. There is not this connection between people being abused and being gay. People being sexually abused. We always hear that. Well, they were molested. Well, I'm a trans person. I was never, in fact, molested or abused. I had an unsupportive family, you know, but that's a totally different story. They would see that not as abuse, but as the right thing to do. Uh, simply put, the statistics don't line up. But moving on. Um... Just kind of storming through here, trying to see what we've got. Um, of course, he attacked Planned Parenthood, uh, which I would point out, you know, in the cases of Planned Parenthood, you know, this is an organization that provides services on a sliding scale, which really helps with the, um, you know, with people who are stuck in this cycle of poverty. They do not simply offer abortion and as he tries to talk about how Planned Parenthood has began uh, quite some time ago, actually, offering um, gender-affirming care. In fact, they offer birth control, STD testing, wellness exams, adoption referrals, cervical cancer screenings, HIV testing and counseling, menopause services, men's health services. I mean, there's a number of things, but this is all the scare tactic. Uh, one of the stories that he got into was the sto a 2018 story about a Hamilton County, Ohio teen. Now, he embellishes the story a lot. But in this story, this transgender boy who was 17 years old was seeking medical assistance with his transition. Now, in this case, David tries to imply, or say outright, basically, that the school counselors were grooming him for transition without the parents' knowledge. Um, the fact of the matter is, the story's been widely reported on. Um, this child actually had support from other members of his family. His parents refused to accept that he was transgender. Um, he ended up, um, eventually he had suicidal feelings and inclinations because of the lack of support that he had and he reached out to a suicide prevention network. That is when the medical facility kind of got involved and they, the doctors, rightfully so, refused to release him back into his parents' care. His grandparents got involved and they were actually highly supportive of him. So it ended up that the grandparents were awarded custody because his parents were basically putting him in a situation where it was leading to him leading him to consider suicide. In David's view, that was the wrong decision. They should have put him back with the parents anyway and let them continue to basically torture the 17-year-old. Now, David continues on through a number of points. I'm not going to put them all up at, at this point in time. I may put a text version up somewhere in the comments so you can see the full response to that video. Um, needless to say, um, it got such backlash, his visit to this church, that the church actually disavowed um, his, his having him appear there. They apologized for it. Um, they admitted that it was political, and of course, the Center for Christian Virtue denied that it was at all political because they say that they are not a political organization, despite the fact that they are pushing laws in this state. So, going back, that's kind of a little bit of the background on the Center for Christian Virtue. Some of the things I wanted to bring up is there have been several hearings for um, this HB 454. Now, in most of those cases, they have barely allowed the people who oppose this bill to speak. 
But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the people who are supporting it for you to look at. So, some of the names mentioned as providing testimony were Matt Sharp from the Alliance Defending Freedom, another right-wing, you know, it's, it's a right-wing group that basically sues all over the country to try to implement their way. The, uh, a, a, a spokesperson for the American College of Pediatricians Christian Medical and Dental Association. Now that sounds really official. I, had, I really encourage you, and maybe I'll do a little bit of a video on this at some point, to look into the American College of Pediatricians. This is not the real organization, guys. This is not the real doctor's association. This is a right-wing group that was founded to oppose, originally, gay marriage and adoption by gay people. They spout all sorts of complete and total bullshit, so it's not a surprise. Um, Gender Care Consumer Advocacy Network. A spokesperson for the Women's Liberation Front. Someone spoke from the Family Policy Alliance. And here's one I want to point out for all our Ohio residents. The other speaker in support of this bill to rip trans-affirming health care away from trans children in the state of Ohio was Brian Hickey, a representative from the Catholic Conference of Ohio. Now, there are some others, of course, David, uh, David Mahan, the one we were just talking about from the Center for Christian Virtue, also testified. Ohio Parents' Rights in Education spokesperson Lisa Breedlove Chafee, and one of the people submitting a well-known Ohio bigot, Linda Harvey from Mission America anti-LGBT, through and through, constantly comes up with loads of crap. Now, who was actually speaking opposing this bill? You know, they had a hodgepodge of the most discredited morons up there saying that this bill was the right thing to do. Who was on the other side saying that we shouldn't rip health care away from children? Well, as it so happens, it was representatives from the Ohio Children's Hospital Association, from Nationwide Children's Hospital, from Cincinnati Children's Hospital and Medical Center, and then another spokesperson from the Ohio Children's Hospital Association. Basically, you have all the actual trained medical providers these people who have expertise in the field saying this is a horrible law, and you have right-wing wing nuts saying, yes, let's go after trans kids. So, the reason I'm making this video is we all need to be aware of what's going on. This is an attack on kids. It is an attack that is going to branch out to all sorts of other areas. Now that privacy has become basically a nothing in the eyes of our Supreme Court. They are opening floodgates even more for one theocratic law after another. And yes, they're going after trans people right now. Even more of a focus than going after the whole of the LGBT community. But I will stand up and fight with you because here's the simple fact. I know how this story will end if they get their way. They are not planning to go after trans people and stop there. They're focusing these laws on the trans community because number one, out of the big four, so to speak, the LGBT acronym, we are the smallest community, which makes us an easy target. They target children, trans children, because number one, a lot of them lack the ability to speak up for themselves. And number two, trying to convince or convincing right-wing parents that your children are only one, you know, activist teacher away from putting on a pair of pantyhose 
and dancing down the street with a rainbow flag is something that is a great scare tactic for them to use, despite the fact that it's based in complete and utter bullshit and not anywhere near reality. We have to stand up. We have to fight. I encourage you, go to the Ohio Legislature page. I will provide a link at the bottom of this video. Look at the sponsors of HB 454, of 616, 327, and 151. And then start calling. Their information is available. I will provide the link anywhere I can. I will provide the info. I encourage every one of you to call your legislatures and legislators and say this is unacceptable. You know, Pastor Gary Click is leading this bill to attack the rights of trans children. And if you think this has to do with anything other than his religious dogma, you are insane. What we are seeing right now is the push to, in, to implement their dogma and doctrine into our state law. And that's just Ohio. If I covered every transphobic bill going through state legislatures, this would be a days-long video. Look in your state. Research it. I can guarantee you, you won't have to look very far to find one of these transphobic bills. To my Ohio people, we've got to continue to fight this bill. We have got to hold these legislators accountable and let them know that attacking our children is not going to be a win for you. That people of good faith are going to come out they're going to hold you accountable, we're going to protest, and put simply as the phrase, which may be a little cliche at this point, but you can either respect our existence or expect our resistance. That's it for today, guys. If you have ideas for other videos, please reach out. Um, let me know what you want to hear about. I will continue looking at topics that I think we need to cover. Um, in the meantime, my quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down, hold your head up high, continue to fight. Remember, our elders with Stonewall, they fought bravely. They were not quiet. They did not sit back and watch a government just continue to brutalize our people. They fought and they fought like hell. And we're going to have to fight like hell, too, if we want to make a better future for our young people in the LGBT community. And honestly, all young people. We've got to fight. I ask you to please continue that fight. Again, links will be at the bottom of the video. And I'll see you at the next episode of The Trans Atheist. Thank you. Bye-bye.